Okay, let's get this bit of unrelated news out of the way first, because I know people will keep telling me about it if I don't mention it. I'll probably mention it as a follow-up thing on the Gymquisition at some point. But the Fort Hog the Orc Slayer DLC that was rather controversial in Shadow of War, the uh, day one launch DLC that was coming out to honour a passed away member of the Monolith Productions team, that is now free. It's not $5 DLC. Probably for the best, for the reasons I mentioned in the Gymquisition I did on it, and because of Warner Brothers' involvement, anything they touch is gonna look tacky so that's a resolution now let's talk about the thing that I'm here to talk mostly about today steam that's the other thing I like to bang on about outside a shadow of war but we're not talking about microtransactions today, so there's a nice little treat for you. No, today's industry bullshit isn't so much bullshit that's happened, it's bullshit that's had some shit cut away from it to be a little bit less bullshit. Steam has finally had enough of a particular developer and well, first of all, this will tell you just exactly how far you have to go to push Valve, which apparently is very fucking far. The developer, quote unquote, in particular here, well, let's just say they make Digital Homicide look lazy. Digital Homicide once shocked me when I looked at its library and was like, holy shit, in the past, like, less than two years, they've brought out, like, 20 games. Oh, yeah, yeah, that was nothing compared to what Zonitron does. Zonitron, going by the name of Silent Echo Studios, just had 173 games pulled from Steam. 173. Over the past few months, Zonitron had brought out 100 games. And it's not hard to see why when you look at what some of these games are. I actually had to ask my comrade in arms Mello online which one of their games I played once because they're so homogenous, they're so identical that it's hard to tell. Turns out it was Raccoon Hero, the game you're looking at now. Now there are, or there were, like half a dozen Raccoon Hero games. All of them looked exactly the fucking same. The only thing that was different was like a bit of a different background. It looked like levels of one game had been separated and then sold as individual games. That's how Zonitron did business, that's how Zonitron made its money. It did a lot of those achievement spam games, Chibo spammers, where they'd sell the game for a pittance, but try and make as much money as they could from people desperate for achievements, who could get them for basically doing nothing, playing Zonitron's 173 plus piles of shite. Among asset flippers, Zonitron was the king. Zonitron would just take these games wholesale from Unity's asset store and plonk them up. As I say, in the hundreds, because on Steam Direct there are no checks and balances. Under Greenlight, Zonitron had a harder time. And that's the sad thing, this whole Steam Direct with all of its promises, I mean, it's turned out to be a load of bollocks, hasn't it? Valve may have a problem with these so-called fake games, that's what they call them, but you have to push so hard to get them to do something. I mean, 173 games, multiple complaints from users who are sick of seeing clones after clones of asset flips. Because it's not just enough to do an asset flip, you've gotta do like five or six different versions of the same asset flip. I mean, double down on your laziness, why don't you? Zonitron, you really were the worst of the fucking hacks. I often say that if you give a major publisher an inch, they'll take fucking everything. And it, this just goes to prove you don't need to be a big company to do it. Over on the indie side, on the other end of the spectrum, you have these small, know-nothing, bargain basement, bottom feeding, trash bag developers. I mean, we, we, we struggle to call them developers. Doing exactly the same shit. Steam Direct gives them an inch. Well, I mean, that gave them the mile. They took the fucking country. Filling up the store page. That's how far you have to push things. Otherwise, Steam Direct is a complete fucking free-for-all and Valve will have to come in after the fact and clean up all the spillage. Which it's done here with Zonitron, which as I say was called Silent Echo Studios at the time, and that's far from the only name they used. Again, like I said, these guys were digital homicide on bath salts. Zonitron had a whole bunch of fake sock puppet accounts on Steam, so Zonitron had to go that little bit further. According to Mellow Online, here's a bunch of the names that Zonitron slash Silent Echo was going under, publishing games on Steam, all the merry time. 
Roleplay games, Cubecumber games, Goo Cubelets games, Zonitron Studios, Zonitron Productions, Crimson Duck Studios, Digital Airony, Silicon Echo, A Digital Carrot Productions, Netfork Studios, Pixberry Studios, Anteater Games, Floop Productions, and Sword Bubble Games. Like I say, those are the only ones we know about, but that's what this three-person team was doing. Just making company after company after company putting out asset flip after asset flip, and then clone of asset flip after clone of asset flip, to the point where Steam was drowning in Zonitron's shit. You'll notice that in my Jimpression series, I do a lot less asset flips and shitty games than I used to. And that's because even among shitty games, the standards dropped after Steam Direct happened. That's, that's the sad thing. Like, they no longer have to even get a bit of attention from the audience first. So the games just got worse. They got repetitive, they got... Like, there's that other one, the, the Achievement Hunter games that promise thousands of achievements, and that's their only reason for existing. I played a couple of them, thinking it might make an interesting series. I got bored of them, my audience got bored of them, it was boring. The same games over and over again, not even funny bad. What a sad fucking world we live in, where I am lamenting the need for a higher class of crap. But that's what Steam Direct with all its promise, with all of Valve's pledge to crack down on so-called fake games, has led us. Far from improving the situation, Steam is a worse hellhole than ever. Again, as I say, I'm a browser. I don't use algorithms. I mean, fucking Valve and its algorithms. If, if Valve could produce an algorithm that developed games, we'd have Half-Life 3 already. Anything that would save Valve from doing some god forbid work. So I look at all the new releases and it's just fucking tough. It is tough scrolling through games that look the same. Identikit asset flip shite. I can find some good, interesting games, go to the popular new releases, find some of the stuff I've been playing lately, but if I want to find something like that Age of Barbarian Arena game, something that is bad but funny, something that's amusing in its B-movie quality level, or other B-game quality level. You know, something that isn't good, but still has some heart, still has some developers that gave a shit, still has some fucking merit. The digging that needs to be done now, like you need the world's biggest fucking shovel because the manure is overwhelming. I'm glad Valve stepped in here. Nothing of value was lost. These were not people making games. I truly do agree that the term fake game here makes sense. This company was taking the absolute piss out of Steam Direct. Taking liberties as far as liberties could be taken. And like Digital Homicide before them, they were a poison in the Steam marketplace. They had no fucking place there. If you're on Steam, you're there to either sell video games, interesting software, or movies that nobody's going to watch. You're not there to do fuck all work and expect to make some money for it. That's Valve's job. You know I'm beginning to think that Steam Direct was a mistake. Trash, even. I mean, so, well, not trash, more like a, a sarlacc pit that's vomiting up all the things that it's half digested over the years. Covering Tatooine in sick and muck and bits of Boba Fett's face. <laughs> Sorry, I made myself laugh. I know that's classless, but... <laughs> bits of his face. Anyway, this is good news. It is good news. It's good when someone who's only on Steam to take the piss out of Steam and the people who use it are shown the door. That's where they belong. The d Well, on outside the door. They don't belong on the door. They belong outside the door, in the snow, hopefully, where their company can be like Jack Nicholson at the end of Shining and just sit there in a maze frozen with a stupid smile on their face. On the flip side, though, I'm just just giving the pop filter a workout there. It's not gonna f fucking fix that. On the flip side though, <laughs> that's quite fun to do. Flip, I'm <laughs> getting sidetracked. On the flip side though, this really goes to show exactly what needs to be done to get Valve to stand up and look at what's going on. There are other companies that are still doing this shit. 
there are plenty of companies doing shady, underhanded bollocks that are taking the piss out of Steam and the people who use it, who are throwing out asset flips, throwing out clones, throwing out cynical Chivo spam games over and over again, all to ride this gravy train while it lasts, all to take advantage of Valve's complete lackadaisical attitude toward policing its own content. Big moves like this, like this move against Zonitron, it's good PR, it makes it look like Valve stomping down its feet, but for people like me, who are constantly looking at Steam, who are seeing the shit that's uploaded, we know this is nothing. This is nothing. This was the biggest, most extreme example, but there are lots of little ones. Lots of tiny little pubic lice crawling around in Steam's bush. But it's only when you reach a level of extreme that could only be described as astro-fucking-nomical that Valve is forced to take action. So yeah, Steam Direct, fuck it.